All right. Um, I decided that the next two weeks of this class are going to be different than the previous weeks of this class. I'm going to give you a little mini project, if you will, to work on. And it's only one page. And I have a certain set of requirements that I want you to accomplish. But you're welcome to, to review um, the framework, what you know, JavaScript, anything you want to expand upon it and to do even more than what I'm asking you to do. Let me describe um, the project to you. It's a one-pager. Um, and let me describe the project to you and let me, uh, then I'll sort of give you some tips to sort of jumpstart you and to get you started. Here's what I want. I want you, and we've seen some things with geolocation and all that in previous classes. I want you to have a page that will have an aerial map of Lorain County Community College using Google Maps. All right? My, uh, my suggestion, I believe, would work best if you use the satellite view. That being said, if you're clever, you could probably overlay on top of the Google Maps um, some sort of transparent GIF that showed the actual buildings, you know, drawn or whatever. Anyhow, so you have a map of the college. Let me draw a few of the buildings in. I'm trying to remember where everything is. And so on. All right. So you have an aerial view of the college satellite view. It should be such that if the user that's viewing this page is on campus and using a mobile device, that you get a marker that indicates where they are. So let's say they're in the parking lot over there by the business division. So there'll be a marker that says, you know, you are here. All right. There should then be a set of buttons. I'm just really rough sketching this out. You folks will do your magic to make it look excellent. And on those buttons will be the names of the various buildings on campus. So College Center, Business Building, iLoft, the Library, and so on. As a user clicks a button, a marker should appear to show where that building is. All right. So, if they were to click the College Center button, a marker should pop up to say, here's the College Center. If they click then the BU Building button, the College Center marker should go away and the Building Division marker should appear saying, hey, there's the, there's the business division. That's it in a nutshell. A map with markers on it that get triggered based on clicking the buttons. Now, to do this, um, there's a few things that you need to do. You need to work with the Google API, for one. And you also need to do some stuff with geolocation to find out where they are. And you need some JavaScript. I would suggest you build this using the jQuery mobile framework to get the appearance. But you, you don't have to. But that's kind of a suggestion. This just gives you an additional chance to practice it. I would hope you make this look as good as you can and add any additional functionality that you can think of that would be beneficial. And I'll have a few suggestions for that functionality um, towards the end. So I'm going to spend maybe 10 more minutes giving you sort of a preview and, and some ideas of where to start with this. Um, and, and then today, Wednesday, and next week, Monday and Wednesday, the lecture time 
will be your time to work on this and collaborate with, uh, with me and with other students in this class, all right, to, to get this done. Um, I would expect you to work on this at least through the lecture period. So working on this takes the place of a lecture. Um, the lab period, then, you can work on any of the assignments that you have to, whether it be this one or one of the earlier ones. All right, let's look at some helpful hints on how to proceed on this one. Yeah, thank you. I prepared some helpful hints. Uh, it's up to you. It's a little scary here, completely dark. Let's see how well we can see. I forgot to enable this. There we go. Yeah. All right. Under assignments, the last one is mini project. I just enabled it now. I forgot to enable it yesterday. And here's the instructions. All right. About up to here is what we've talked about so far. All right. Now, one thing to keep in mind is remember that just about any big problem is really just a series of small problems that you have to solve. So definitely take an incremental approach at doing this. Don't try to, to hit a home run and nail everything right off the bat. Do work on a piece of it at a time. And here's what I would suggest the, the sort of approach you should take. Now this map should work whether you're on campus or not on campus. In other words, if I'm at home and I want to figure out where Stocker Center is, it should work. Of course, it's not going to show where I am because, you know, it can't show me and my home in Amherst on the same map as it can show a campus map, right? But it can, uh, you know, it can show where the buildings are and be interactive so that when I touch the building, it pops up. All right. So this page should have a lot of examples that are helpful. The one that we've looked at already. Specifically, this page shows you how to get a map of your current location. And it won't work in IE. But if we open up in Firefox, it will work. You know, when I'm, when I'm like off duty, like over the weekends and all that, it's like I forget there is such a thing as Internet Explorer. I, re I really do. It, it's like I'm always surprised when I come back on Monday and, and have something happen like that. It's like, oh, yeah, that's right. All right. All right. So here's the code. This is code that's written and is fairly straightforward that allows me to show a map of where I am. All right. Now, in this case, all right, it's showing a map and because it's using IP detection and that is not necessarily going to be very precise, it simply shows me that I'm in Illyria. All right. Now, how is this going to be different than what you need to do? It's going to be different than what you need to do in a couple of respects. The first respect is you don't want to show a map of the person's current location. All right? You want to show a map of Lyon County Community College regardless of where in the world people click on this. So you'll need to adapt this code to not show the current location, but to show a map that will always be of Lorain County Community College. So that's the first thing that you need to change about this. Okay? And again, here's the code. It's not that extensive of code. If you look through it and do some research, you should be able to figure out how to make this not show the current location, but to show specific latitudes and longitudes. 
Now, how do you figure out latitudes and longitudes? We'll get to that in a minute. All right? The other thing about this is we want a satellite view and not this, you know, um, you know, roadmap view. And as you might guess, part of the API when you ask for a map from Google Maps is to specify the format of the map. The other thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to choose the appropriate level of zooming. All right? So this is zoomed at a certain level. You'll want to make sure that you zoom in your map to a size that's appropriate. But at any rate, this will give you a start, because this shows you how you can pull and display a map of something using Google Maps. You'll want to change this to not use your current location, but to use a predefined location to show a satellite map instead of a road map, like it is here. And lastly, you'll want it to be zoomed at the appropriate level so it will be useful in identifying buildings here on campus. So that's the three things that you need to change about this. Um, yeah? Just now, just to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm getting the parameters correct, just yesterday I was looking at a sample that had essentially multiple markers. In other words, in other words let's say I'm thinking about the county. And it, I could literally establish ten markers throughout the county. Is this something is that different than what you're going after here in terms of yeah hear, hear me out one okay. step at a time okay all right now how do you change this to get the latitude and longitude you actually can very easily figure out the latitude and longitude of something by going to Google Maps doing your search zoom in at the appropriate level switch to satellite and you should be able to see don't let me down Google should be able to see a map, an aerial map of here. All right. Got impatient and hit refresh. That's one of those things that I know that it doesn't make it work any faster, but it makes me feel better, so I'll, I do it. Orion County Community College. All right. Here's the College Center. Here's us. Look out the window and wave. Here's the eye loft. Here's the library. Here's the engineering building and so on down the line. All right. If you want to find the coordinates of something, the latitude and longitude, you can click on it or actually you can right mouse on it and say what's here. And that shows you the latitude and longitude. So for example, if I want to know the latitude and longitude of that fountain out there, I can right mouse on the fountain and say what's here, and it shows me that that's the latitude and longitude. So, you can adapt the code from the previous example, not to use your current location, but to use, you know, whatever you'd consider the center of campus being. I probably would consider somewhere out in the courtyard as being the center of campus. So that would be the center of the map. So you can go and do that. Now, we'll talk about adding markers in a second, but if you want to know the latitude and longitude of any of the buildings, you can do the same thing. If I want to, the, if I want to know the latitude and longitude, for example, of the... Um, College Center, I can right mouse on the College Center, say what is here, and it shows me that that is the latitude and longitude of the College Center. Latitude and longitude of the Business Division building, in fact, let's find us, 
we are probably like right here. That's our latitude and longitude. All right? So, when you know the latitude and longitude, you can put your map there. And simply by adapting the code that, that I showed you in that example, you can change the map. Instead of showing um, a map of the current location, you can show the map of Lorain County Community College. All right. So, let's read through this. This page shows you how to get a map of your current location. Here is how you find the latitude and longitude of something. Next thing we want to do is to find the user's location and place a marker there. All right. Now, this example if I go back a few times. No. My bad. This example does that. This example displays a map and puts a marker at your current location. Okay? So you should be able to use this code to draw a map and put the marker at the current location. All right? Easy enough. So you can use that example as a basis for that. Next thing you want to do is find the latitudes and longitudes of the buildings on campus. Here's a campus map if you're not sure what all those buildings are. Center, business building, high loft, and so on. The code that you use to put a marker for the locations can be adapted to show each building. You'll need to associate JavaScript functions with the buttons, and then I provide a little tutorial on JavaScript functions. I would expect at this point. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with JavaScript, that you'll need to work with me on this. If you're familiar with JavaScript or you want to take a shot at it on your own, that's fine. But at this point, I would expect you to want to, to, to probably need some help from me to, to figure out how to link your code to, uh, or your button via, uh, uh, to, to some JavaScript code so that when you click on a button, it displays um, the appropriate marker to the appropriate building. Now, I only want you to show one building marker at a time, okay? So if you click on, if you say that you want to see the college center, then you want to click the business building, it should get rid of the marker for the college center and then show the marker for the business building. That code is a little tricky, and I'll be glad to help any of you out with it. Again, you can take a stab on your own. I'm certainly not going to discourage you to try to work on it independently, but I definitely acknowledge that code to be tricky, and I can give you a hand with it. I would uh, suggest a jQuery mobile look to the page, review the Google Map API, think of other functionality that could be beneficial, whether related to Google Maps or not. For example, what about a panic button that would call security? All right, you're on campus and you're looking for the Stalker Center and you see someone breaking into a car in the parking lot. Well, it would be nice if you could just press a button and call security. All right, so that would be uh, a possibility of extra functionality. Overlaying the drawn map on top of Google Maps would be a possibility as well. All right, so that Again, we have our campus map. It would be possible to overlay this on top of that. All right. It'd be possible to, instead of showing a marker, to show in some other manner. You know, maybe highlight that. I don't know. You know, your, your choice, your imagination as a developer will come into play here. I want to see you do... Uh, great things with this. All right? I want to see it go beyond just the, the basic functionality and, and really, really, really shine on this example. All right? Now, again, I want to emphasize that we're taking the rest of today, Wednesday, and next week. 
So my hope is, is that you all do a great job with this. I'm actually going to try to convince them to incorporate this on the LC's website as, as a feature, as opposed to that static map which they have, or maybe in addition to the static map that they have, to put this interactive map on there. I think it would be a great way that it would allow you folks to um, say that you worked on something that was, you know, actually implemented. Um, it would serve the community and it would serve to, to promote uh, the, the mobile development program. So I think it would really be a, a real win-win situation, um, real positive for everyone concerned. So I'm going to actually talk to someone in our marketing department tomorrow uh, about this. I may actually even see if we can turn this into an Android app. All right, because once you have the web page, it's pretty trivial to, to pop the web page into an Android app. All right, but anyhow, the first thing to do is I think this is a good exercise. It's something that's meaningful. It's something that you should have the base to start on now. Now, you might not know how to do everything. In fact, you probably don't know how to do everything in this assignment, but I've given some examples. You should have a base to start out from, and you should work through and through asking questions of me, asking questions of the other folks in class, reviewing the Google API, reviewing the examples. You should be able to go and take this. So I would suggest doing this a piece at a time. Maybe your goal for today is to have a page that shows a map of LC that's zoomed to the right level and it's a satellite view. And maybe that's all you get done today, but you got that done. All right. Then look at well, if the person's on campus, can it show where the person's location is? Now, I know to test that, you have to put it out on our web server, right? And then I have mobile devices that you could test that for. You could even go outside if you wanted to test it to see, you know, how the GPS, you know, in case the GPS doesn't work so well indoors or, or whatever. All right? At any rate, that's your assignment. Do we have any questions before we break and go downstairs? I've seen various pre-programmed sites, whether it's you go through them one at a time or you see a whole bunch of pins simultaneously. Um, but I can't say that I've seen those pre-programmed sites used with where I am simultaneously. Is, is there any... Well, that'll be, that'll be a first then, right? I was just curious if there was, like I said, anyone else out there who had, had done something similar just as a... Everyone, uh, everything has already been done, ever. So, yeah, someone has done that. <laughs> oh, no, I'm always curious. I mean, yeah. I, I just have never come across that myself. Well, uh, again, that doesn't matter. We have a strategy on how we can do that. Um, we know that we can put multiple pins out on, on, on a site, uh, or on a map, rather. You know, we've seen, exa you know, you said you've seen examples of that. And those pins can be anything we want them to be. So yeah, we can make a pin that one that shows where we are, one that shows where um, where uh, certain predefined buildings are. So yep, one step at a time. Now, first get the map going right, and then start working on the other things. All right. Now again, you, you can take any approach to this that you want. You know, as long as you end with with a, a finished product. I would strongly urge you to do a piece at a time. But, for example, if you wanted to first develop the map and then develop the buttons to point to the different buildings and then put in the code to show where the user is, that's fine. You can do it in any order as long as when you're done you have a completed project. But, again, I would, I would urge you to do a piece at a time and not try to, to take too big of a bite off all at once. Other questions? being done in this mode again is that you talk with other folks in the class and you talk with me. So take a start, do what you can, and we'll go from there. Don't be offended if I don't give you a direct answer to the question. All right? It's not that I don't want to help you. It's that I think sometimes I can help you more by nudging you in the right direction instead of directly pointing it out. All right. We'll see you down in the lab.